Rubber Hose is the fastest and simplest way to rig and animate characters in After Effects. It's a plugin by Battleaxe that greatly simplifies an aspect of animation that most people find pretty difficult, character animation. Let's jump in. So I've designed some characters here. I took my style inspiration from Aaron Hill. You should go check out his designs, they are very cool. I'm going to talk you through animating a walk cycle like this using Rubber Hose. You can download the project files in the description or you can follow along with your own design. Before I start guys, if you want the plugin and you want to support the channel, I have an affiliate code in the description you can use. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to draw the character out here. So let's draw a square for the body. Something like that. Let's maybe choose this green for the color. Let's set the anchor point to the center by holding control and double clicking pan behind. Let's name the layer body. Now let's draw the head. So I'm gonna press F2 to deselect the body, grab another square tool, let's zoom in a bit. Hold shift and draw another square. And again, I'm gonna name this head. I'm going to control double click pan behind to center the anchor point. Shift and click the body so they're both selected. Go to the align panel and just align them both so they're both at the same level on the right. And I'm going to move the head down to connect with the body. We're going to change the color of the head to this uh, orange color. Let's parent the head to the body. Let's draw a new shape, which is going to be the ground. Let's name this ground and change the label color to something else. Let's shy the ground here so we don't always have to see it. Lock the layer and then hide shy layers so we don't see the ground anymore. Just so we have less layers here in the layers panel. Let's maybe change the head and the body to a green label color so it's clear. And let's just drag the body up a bit to about there. So I think we're ready to start creating some of our limbs. We're gonna be using rubber hose. To bring up rubber hose, uh, once you've installed the plugin, you just press window and down here, rubber hose two. And then this panel should pop up. So we're gonna be creating the legs first. So let's uh, click here and uh, type leg right. Choose the hip ankle option. All that means is that the two points that it creates, it's gonna name them hip and ankle, which is what we want because we're making a leg. And then click new rubber hose. And here it's created a bendy stroke with two points on either end that you can drag around. Down in the layers panel, you can see that this one is called hip. So we're going to drag it where we want the hip to be, about there probably. And the ankle we're going to drag to the ground about here. The hose here is uh, too long, so we're going to click the ankle on the layers panel, press E to bring up the rubber hose to effect, twirl it down, and let's drag the hose length down a bit, maybe to about there. The hose is currently a curve and you can't really see where the knee is, so we can reduce the bend radius. Actually, I'm gonna reduce it to zero to get a nice point for the knee. Let's click on the hip and parent it to the body. So now when we move the body around, the hip will move with it. Let's click the leg and change the stroke color to one of our colors. Change it to a nice blue. Now we're going to create a foot. So again, press F2 to deselect all of the layers. Grab a rectangle tool. Let's zoom in here and drag out a nice rectangle. And let's name this foot, right, drag it to about there. Now let's parent the ankle of our rubber hose to our foot by using the parent pick whip. Now, if we drag our foot around, you can see the leg moves with it. Let's press Y to enable pan behind mode and drag the anchor point of the foot down to where the heel is, about here. We're not gonna create the other leg yet. We're going to do the animation for the leg before we duplicate the other one so that we don't have to do the animation twice. But we are gonna start animating the body now. So during a walk cycle, the body kind of bobs up and down. So we're gonna add some position keyframes. Oh, by the way, I've set my uh, sequence here to 80 frames. If you don't see frames, if you just see time units, you can control and click the display style here and it will switch between time and frames. So I've switched it to frames and I've set my composition to 80 frames. 
So I set a position keyframe here for my body. I'm going to go to 10 frames and we're going to pull the body down a bit. We're going to go to 20 frames, pull the body back up a bit, 30 frames, down a bit. And then for 40 frames, we're going to highlight our first keyframe, control paste there. So we've got this movement. I think it could be a bit more extreme than that, especially as we have an abstract character. So actually I'm going to go to 10 frames again and drag it down a bit further, maybe there. And then just copy and paste this keyframe to our other down frame at 30 frames. So now we've got a more pronounced movement. You can see here it stops um, after 40 frames. So rather than us having to make more and more keyframes, we can add a loop expression. So let's hold Alt, click the position stopwatch and type loop out. And now the animation loops. We're not going to add any easing to our keyframes till the end. So if it looks a bit janky, we'll sort that out at the end. Now we're going to animate our foot. So let's select our foot, add a position keyframe at zero frames. Now the foot is actually going to start back a bit. Oh, also let's give the foot a distinct color. Let's uh, just color it yellow. So we've moved the foot back a bit here. Now at 20 frames, we're going to move the foot forward. So we've got this kind of movement. Copy and paste those keyframes. Go to 40 frames, paste them again. And then copy the first keyframe and paste it at the end. So now we've just got a back and forward movement like this. Now what happens is when the foot moves forward, it tends to go up into the air. So we're going to add a Y position keyframe. So we're going to separate these dimensions here. So if we right click on the position property, press separate dimensions, delete all the Y keyframes. And for some reason, when you separate the dimensions, add some easing to the start and end keyframes. So let's just highlight these and control click, get rid of the easing just so it's back how it was. And now for the Y position, we'll add a keyframe at the start at zero frames. As the foot comes forward, maybe at 10 frames, we will move it up on the Y. So about there. And then let's bring it back down at 20 frames. So we have something like this. And then obviously while the foot is being pulled back, it should be dead on the ground like so. Now we also want to loop these three keyframes, but you'll notice if we add a loop out keyframe here, it won't look right. But if we copy this keyframe at the end here and we add it at 40 frames, you can see now it looks right. This is because if we added it without this keyframe, it would get to here and then it would instantly start looping again. Whereas we wanted to start looping after frame 40, which was why we added this uh, keyframe here. So now let's add um, some rotation keyframes to the foot. Let's go to frame zero, add a rotation keyframe. As the foot starts to come up, maybe at five frames, it tends to bend down a little bit can be quite subtle and then just before it comes down it tends to go up a little bit so let's drag actually this keyframe forward to the point at which the heel touches the ground and then we want to copy and paste the first keyframe so the foot's flat on the ground again so we have something like this and again we want this to loop so let's alt click on the stopwatch type loop out this again doesn't work correctly because as soon as it gets to this last keyframe it starts looping and starts to do this movement where the, the foot rotates down but we actually want it to not loop not start looping again until it's back to this point here frame 40 so if we again copy this keyframe paste it here now it will only start looping there which is exactly what we want so I think the foot doesn't quite come back far enough. So we're going to go to frame zero and we're going to drag it back a bit further. And then I'm going to copy and paste that keyframe, bring it back a bit more. And again at the end here. And then when it comes forward as well, I want it to come forward a bit more. So about there. So again, copy paste there. Yeah. When the foot comes up, it tends to bend on the heel a bit. So to accomplish that, we have to add a keyframe on the path. So if we twirl down the foot layer, twirl down the rectangle, select the path property and uh, press 
G to select the pen tool. And let's add some extra points to our foot here. Keyframe the path at frame zero. And then as the foot comes up, uh, let's drag our points around to try and create a bend in the foot. And then after the bend, we want it to come back to the original position. So just copy this keyframe at the beginning and paste it afterwards. So now we have something like that. Which I think looks a little better. And again, we want to loop this animation. Unfortunately, you can't seem to add a loop out expression to a path keyframe. So we're going to have to do this manually. Let's look at next time it come, the heel comes back here. Copy our keyframes here and paste them. Now the heel bends every time. So I think we're ready to duplicate the leg now. So let's uh, click our leg layer. Let's open the manage panel of rubber hose. Click this button, which will duplicate the selected hose group. And you can see down here, it's now added a new hose group and it's uh, automatically labeled them leg L because it's detected that this one is called leg R. Let's uh, just move them up so they're separate. Change the label color to something else. Now let's duplicate our foot. Rename it to foot L. Press U to open up all the keyframes for that layer. Let's drag all the keyframes for this foot forward by 20 frames. And now you can see if you uh, bring the playhead forward that the feet look like this. At the start of the animation, however, look, the um, foot is static because there's no keyframes. So to deal with this, we're going to add some expressions. Currently the feet are using the loop out expression, which loops all the keyframes after the keyframes that you've currently got. We want the keyframes to loop before because we've dragged all these keyframes forward. So if we change this, for instance, to loop in and do the same for the X position, and the rotation. Now it's looping nicely before, but you can see it's screwing up afterwards now. And this is because we do actually want it to loop out as well. So we could add more keyframes at the end here, but just to show you something cool, um, we can make it so it loops in and it loops out. So to do that, we have to write a little expression which goes loop in plus loop out minus value. Now I'm going to highlight that and copy it. And I'm going to paste it into the expressions for all the other properties. And now it loops perfectly. So let's go to 20 frames and drag the ankle of our left leg back to our new foot. Let's parent this ankle to our left foot. And now we can see some interesting movement here. Let's drag the left leg behind the body. Let's add some sway to the body. Um, so if we select the body, press R, add a rota rotation keyframe. Let's go to frame 40 and copy and paste this keyframe. And now in between, we're going to add some variation in the rotation. Let's try, let's try minus four at frame 10. And at frame 20, let's try plus four. That might be too extreme. And then let's try minus four again at frame 30. And let's add a loop out expression to this before we tweak it some more. Now if we play, the movement of the body tends to be a little bit delayed in comparison to the legs. So let's drag these keyframes forward a little bit. I think that looks okay. But you can see a little um, jitter at the end here where the end doesn't match up with the start. If you press shift home and shift end on your keyboard, look, these don't match up entirely. Um, so to fix this, again, we have to add that custom expression we wrote, which went uh, loop in plus loop out minus value. And the reason is that because we've had now got this empty space before the start of the first keyframe, it wasn't moving at all during that empty space. Um, it was only looping after these keyframes and not before. So now we've got it looping before and after it should uh, match up nicely now. There we go, perfect. Oh, at the start here, we need to change from zero to plus four because right now it's set to zero and uh, should be plus four. And the same at the end. Now let's watch it again. Nice. 
Now I think it's time to add some easing, which can make everything look a lot better. Just to make things simple, we will press Control A to highlight all the, all the layers that we have. Press U to bring up all of the keyframes and just drag a box around all of them. Press F9 to add some simple easy ease and then looking a lot smoother now. Now it's time to add the arms. So let's go to the build panel of rubber hose and let's click shoulder wrist and let's rename our hose group to arm L and click new rubber hose. Let's highlight our layers and change the layer color. Let's drag our shoulder onto the body. Drag our wrist up a bit. You can see the arm is way too long. So we're going to again, select our wrist, press E, open the rubber hose panel, change the hose length. And we want to change the bend direction from 100 to minus 100. And that just changes the direction of the bend here. I want the arm to kind of dangle very loosely and naturally. So we're going to drag the uh, wrist control down by the legs. Let's change the bend radius to zero like we did for the legs so that it has a more prominent elbow. And I want to decrease the length a bit more. 330. Let's select the arm and change the stroke color. Now let's parent the shoulder to the body and add some keyframes for the wrist. Let's select the wrist, press P, pull up the position keyframes. Let's go to frame zero, add a position keyframe. Now when the leg on the same side as the arm is forward, we want our arm to be back. So let's drag it back to about here. And when our leg on this side is backwards, we want the arm to be more forwards, like this. Now we've got a very sort of linear movement it's just this line here and we kind of want it to be more of a more of a curve so we can drag these handles here for the animation so that it's more of a curve like this and uh, we want it to repeat so we're going to grab this keyframe that starts and go to 40 frames and paste it and you can see these handles now have uh, screwed up a little bit so i'm going to drag them again down here you might have to hold alt in order to drag that keep that handle by itself and let's give a bit of variation so it moves slightly differently on the way back than it does on the way there. And let's uh, loop, hold Alt, click, and loop out. Let's add some easing by pressing F9. Okay, let's create the other arm. Click our arm layer. Go to the Manage tab on Rubber Hose, click Duplicate, drag the arm layers up above, recolor the layer, bring up our keyframes for the wrist. Let's offset them by 20 frames. Drag the arm layers behind the body. And if we play here, you'll see it's not quite right the uh, arm glitches up. Same problem we had before, it's looping the keyframes afterwards but not before. So again, let's pull up our expression and instead let's write this expression which basically says loop before and after. And that should be correct now. And there you go, a simple walk cycle using rubber hose. I hope you can see how useful rubber hose can be and I hope you learned something in this video. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want the plugin and you want to support me at the same time, you can use my affiliate code in the description. I would really appreciate it. Happy animating and as always guys, see you on the flippity flop.